So most homeowners think that it's a buyer's job to pay for and get a home inspection when they're kind of under contract. And um, what we've seen a lot of times is that by getting a home inspection or a septic inspection well before getting on the market, it can save sellers a bunch of time, a bunch of money, and a bunch of stress. So today we're gonna dive into some of the surprising benefits of getting a pre-listing home and septic inspection. We want to talk about how they can lead into a lot smoother, you know, stress-free and, and much more successful home sale. So stay tuned to see how our savvy sellers are getting ahead by scheduling their inspections well before they get on the market. So today we're joined by Tim Henry with Arctic Engineering and Tim is one of our, our area's foremost experts in home inspections, septic inspections, and making sure that pretty much no surprises are being found in a home after it's being sold. And I, I don't recommend him just for, you know, just my clients. I also work with him, you know, personally for any property that I'm buying or selling of my own. And I've said this a, a bunch of times, had he inspected my very first home, I, I definitely probably wouldn't have bought it. Um, so Tim, thanks for being here with us. And look, before we get into the, the benefits of these pre-listing inspections, I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about your experience of you know, what it's like to be walking through a home with a buyer when they're discovering some of these, you know, some of these issues that we've talked about in, in other videos, some sure. of these nightmare scenarios, you know, that, you know, they're discovering in the middle of a home inspection when they're already under contract. Well, one thing um, it's, it's easy for, uh, for me not to realize, but I've, I've learned in many cases, I'll meet these buyers for the first time on site. We're gonna do the home inspection, they're under contract. Um, maybe I've never met them before and get to know them a little bit during the process. And sometimes they'll mention things like, I hope this goes well. We've been looking for a house for maybe four months, maybe six months, maybe nine months. And you, th you think about, well, all of the effort that they've gone through to find a house. Mm -hmm. And they've found one and they're under contract and they love the house, they want to buy it. They are hoping that this thing goes well. Oh yeah. They, they, they want to know what the problems are, but they're hoping, please let, let there not be too many big problems because we finally found the house, we want to buy it and we're under contract, it's moving forward. But it doesn't always go that smooth. You know, they tend to be under, um, maybe a little bit of stress, partly through the, the process. Um, and so, of course, you know, and I try to remind them, I said, look, I said, this is Fairbanks, Alaska, you know, we have, we have some flawed houses. Uh, many of them are very nice, but there, there's going to be things usually that come up on the home inspection. And, uh, you know, in many cases, it's not a big deal. We, we talk about solutions as we go through the house. You know, we'll maybe find a problem and say, okay, well, this can be corrected pretty easy. These are the, you know, these are the contractors that can do this. It's maybe not that expensive to fix. But the real bummer comes when we come across the big issues. You know, we, we go in the crawl space and there's maybe lots of wood rot. There's a rotted rim board, a rotted sill plate or the foundation has pushed in or something. It's, it's like, okay, well this repair, yeah, it can be fixed. It's gonna be expensive. It's gonna be hard to find a contractor. You know, maybe the repair is gonna take two or three months. Um, and that's, that, you know, maybe that's the more extreme examples, but that happens on a somewhat regular basis. And then you can sort of see how there's this disappointment that happens. They love the house, they wanna buy it, and they're like, oh shoot, we're gonna to have to go negotiate repairs. Assuming that goes well, they convince them, the seller to repair things. Then they're like, well, we can forget about moving into this thing four weeks from now. Mm -hmm. I think it's gonna take longer. You know, then, then they're thinking about, oh, well, shoot, well, maybe I gotta, gotta find an apartment or extend a lease or something. And there's more logistical things and it just, it maybe doesn't go as smoothly. So, you know, these are scenarios we see, we see every week. That's, 
you know, what we're talking about here is is something that not a lot of uh, homeowners really think about. You know, they're they're having this idea that, well, you know, it's it's my home, and you know, if they don't like it, then that's that's okay. Um, but when we're working to get a home on the market and we're working to get a home eventually sold, we have to kind of shift our perspective a little bit and and really think about well, what's what's it going to be like when a buyer is walking through our home and what we don't want to have happen is kind of from what you're talking about for a buyer to um, to be discovering some of these things in the middle of a home inspection, yeah. where, where they've you know, they're under contract, so they've already got earnest money on the line. Mm-hmm. They're paying for a home inspection, so they've you know they've got earnest money plus you know six hundred dollars for a home inspection, and you know now they're they're hoping to to be living in the property here in four weeks or so. So they've got a lot on the line and now they're, all of that is potentially, you know, hanging by a thread and they're, the home that they had fallen in love with is now, you know, a, you know, potentially having some pretty large issues. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it is pretty daunting because you can kind of see the color leave their face as they're, as we're going through the list. And as you said, every home has a list, but, when you start to see these, like these, you know, the everything just fall away from them, it's it's really tough. Mm-hmm. Normally, we see, you know, when things are sort of presented in the other way, if they're sort of presented up front, if we were to do a, a pre-sale inspection, we're of course working with the seller to prepare for getting it ready to be sold, and you know, in those cases, they're they're already. Um, packing things up, they're already doing work to get the home ready for a, a sale to pass off to the next person. And, um, you know, they can preemptively do a lot of these things. And from my perspective, observing thousands of buyers and um, their reactions, it often goes um, goes much smoother if, if they have a list, they say, okay, well, these are the things the seller is, is doing. Maybe these are the things the seller is not going to do. They're going to sell the house and not complete these other things. And that's okay. Mm-hmm. Imperfect houses, they sell all the time, right? Right. From my perspective, it seems to be a much smoother process um, because um, maybe the, perhaps there's less emotion involved and the seller has more time to prepare to do those those repairs. You know, maybe, maybe they're not scrambling we got to we got to call ten contractors and see who's available to come take care of this thing before the closing date of the sale. There's a panic. Maybe the contractor you wanted wasn't available. Maybe it ends up being more expensive because it's kind of an expedited repair. Um, the more time that can be allowed to uh, to deal with that, I think the less stress for everybody. Absolutely, and, and you touched on time because that's that's one of our benefits, being able to use the time that you have to your advantage. Mm-hmm. And time is a luxury that we don't always have, mm-hmm. for sure. Um, but when we look at the time that we have within a contract period, it's typically at the most 60 days, mm-hmm. but we're typically between 45 and 60 days. So if we are getting a home inspection at you know day you know 10 to 15, and then negotiating those repairs from 15 or from, you know, 10 to 15, you know, days within the transaction, that only gives us 20, 25 to, to 40 days to, to be getting those, all of those repairs completed. Yeah. So finding, and especially if these, this is done in the summer, which majority of, of our home sales are, are done in the summer, mm-hmm. if we're trying to identify a contractor that is available and get them out to the home to get them to also to get yes. the work done in a timely fashion. A lot of them are already booked. They're already booked. So finding busy. finding a booked or a, an available contractor is, mm-hmm. is going to be hard on us just for that simple fact. But then it's also going to be more expensive. Mm-hmm. And then just because sometimes it's, it's just the nature of, of the beast, yeah. you know, getting a getting that repair completed correctly the first time is also kind of kind of a tricky thing too so you know getting those getting all of these repairs done within that period of time is very difficult 
And what we don't want to have happen is to be kind of really stuck to that time period when we knew that we were going to be selling sometimes, you know, for several months in advance. Mm -hmm. And we could have been taking care of all of those things before. Right. And even for the septic testing, you know, preemptively testing it, there's a tendency that people say, well, we're going to wait till we're under contract. Well, there's certain parts of the year where, um, as you know, we've lost many septic installers. We have kind of a limited, uh, you know, number of contractors that do that work. And certain times of the year, they are completely booked. Mm -hmm. And when you're dealing with those tight time frames, you gotta maybe, maybe the leach field, unfortunately, uh, is it, plugged up, it needs a new leach field. Maybe there needs to be a repair done to the tank or something. Well, it's like, well, shoot, we got, we got a couple weeks to make this repair. It's not very feasible for that to happen. And I, I, deal, I deal with that uh, almost every week where there's, there's a panic. We were, uh, we were receiving a waiver for a septic install and there was some separation violations. And, you know, the DEC, there's, um, you know, there's, they're evaluating it. They're the ones giving us the, the permit. And in some of these cases, um, you know, the buyer, they, they're up against a financing deadlines where they can't necessarily extend it any longer. So they got to well, close on the house. Not for free. Right, it's going to cost, it's going to actually have a pretty significant cost to it. And then, you know, we get the waiver, well, they're closing four days later. Well, we finally get the approved waiver, but there's a stipulation on the waiver. You got to dig it up and you got to add and, and basically upgrade it to the newer standard. And that repair isn't really difficult or not a big deal, but it's like... It still has to happen. Well, shoot, you got to be kidding me. We, we got four days to find somebody to dig this thing up to maintain the closing date. That can really goof things up. Mm -hmm. It sure adds a lot of stress. I mean, we observe high stress from these people all the time. It's it's unbelievable. I'm trying to, trying to reduce that and avoid as much as possible is really the goal. That's the, that's the benefit. Yeah, everybody wants the, the easiest and, and smoothest transaction possible. Yeah. Because we're, we're, we're talking about, you know, sometimes the largest investment that anyone's ever going to make in their lives, buying or selling a house. Yeah. And if you want to do that the hard way, you absolutely can. But if there was an easier way, yeah, why not do that? And we hear, uh, you know, we hear from many people that say, well, doesn't the buyer want to have their own inspection? Yeah, absolutely. And in, in, in some cases, maybe they want to have somebody else look at it. And that's okay. That can certainly happen. Mm -hmm. But in, on many of these cases, the buyers actually call us. We, when we've done a pre-sale inspection, the buyers will call us and schedule a walk through the house. We'll print off the report. We'll meet them there. We're, our goal is to go through items on the report at that point, help them feel comfortable with the house. We talk about maintenance items. We can address any concerns that they have. If they've got maybe something they noticed in a walkthrough or something they've got questions about, we can, we can spend as much time as we need to go through and address all of those concerns. But by that point, usually because it's a pre-sale inspection, maybe the seller has already taken care of some of these things by now. And we can go through, oh, you know, repair one, two, and three, these things are done already. And we can look at it and talk about it with the buyer and it really, uh, it really goes actually pretty smooth that way mm -hmm. because the buyer um, still has the opportunity for discovery. They still have that inspection process, but there's been a report generated already. Um, and, and in many cases, some repairs are actually done by that point and there's a little more peace of mind. And it appears to me that that process is less stressful for everybody and it goes a lot smoother. Well, and it's, there's, there's a couple of other benefits to the, to what you're talking about as well, because what we're seeing, at least, you know, on the negotiation side is that the negotiations, the, the getting the home on the market and getting it sold, being able to negotiate all of those repairs up front is far better and far easier yes. than waiting until we're under contract, you know, with, yes. with a buyer, because we everything's already out in the open. 
you know, the trust has been established. It's a much more, um, it's a much more thorough and detailed disclosure about the property right. than, than just what the, you know, what typical homeowner disclosures are, are about. And yeah. the, the state disclosure, you know, packet is, is pretty detailed, but you can really only disclose what you know. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times home inspections are much more thorough than what most homeowners know. Mm -hmm. um, so being able to negotiate all of those repairs in most time, most instances, you know, upfront at the time of, of getting an offer is, is able to eliminate all of those issues of, you know, then yeah. finding out at a home inspection. Um, but what I'm curious about is, because you, you mentioned the, like the walk and talk home inspection, because mm -hmm. it's a little bit different. What's the, what's your experience with the buyer's attitude and their experience during a walk and talk when you've already got a home inspection that they've already read through where, you know, we're not necessarily discovering new items for the most part. But they're they're seeing the home inspection. They're seeing the items that they're already aware of, yeah. and they're also seeing some things where like, oh, well, the seller's you know, already done X Y Z item. Yeah. Well, it, it seems to me sort of comparing the two scenarios is when there's a a buyer that is going through the house with the inspector for the first time. They they start off sort of not really knowing much about the house. They've maybe done some walkthroughs on the house. They've, they've been there, they like the house, but they, they weren't there at the walkthrough, you know, before getting under contract for the purpose of really digging in and dissecting what are they buying. So that, that is a very, um, a very much deeper discovery process, a little bit on edge versus when there's an inspection report already, they've, they've probably read through that report a couple of times Maybe they have formulated questions and they say, well, maybe we, maybe we don't understand this item very well or we want to see it ourselves, see the, the problem. And that works out pretty well because you can say, oh, well, well, you know, come on over here, let me show you and we can open it up and we can really explain what the, what the problem is, what the solutions are. Um, or, you know, perhaps we can just discuss the item more and maybe the seller has already um, been working towards um, making the corrections, or maybe they've already made provisions to to, to make headway towards fixing that. Mm -hmm. In which case, um, you know, there's there's almost more relief. Like it's much less stress. They're enjoying the process. They're still learning about the house. Um, there's lots of discussion still about um, you know maintenance things. Uh, boiler servicing and drainage and rain gutters and roofs and we, we still have those conversations because we want the buyers to be successful and taking care of the home and operating the home um, but it uh, it sure seems to be uh, and it seems to be less stress it seems to be a funner process a little bit uh, a, a little bit lighter not so intense where you know they're like let's yeah, life's not hanging by a thread. Let's uncover everything. Let's yeah. <laughs> turn over that couch over there. Let's see what's yeah. what's we'll happening. Out house, in house. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, I almost forgot. Um, one of the things that we're working on in the future is a question and answer video too. So if while you're watching this video, you've got some questions that you'd like to ask Tim, make sure you drop them in the comment section below. We'll pull all those together and we'll do a, a Q and A video too. So check that out. Make sure you drop them down in the comment section. Ask anything anything. We may answer it. Just might. <laughs> Thinking about moving to Fairbanks? Well, click on the link below for my free relocation guide where I talk about top schools, top neighborhoods, and so much more. Let's talk about the, the downsides because, you know, that's a question that people are going to ask. What are the downsides of, of knowing all of this information up front? Because while knowledge is, is definitely power, sometimes knowledge is a little bit of a curse too. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we talked a little bit about how having time to our advantage is great, but we don't always have that. Um, finding out in a short time frame that we need to come up with, you know, we talked about septic systems before, but coming up with $30,000 to fix a septic system mm -hmm. or $100,000 to fix some drainage, um, sometimes that can be pretty tough, but yeah. there's really no way even if you had the time, knowledge 
of that information isn't necessarily going to be a, a good thing or a bad thing. It just it is. Well, some some people are they do have a fear of what what is going to be found mm -hmm. on their house. Um, you know, maybe they're generally aware of some some issues that maybe they they're not. They think, well, we're kind of aware of what you know. This is not good, but they don't understand the magnitude of it, or or maybe um, you know what it might require to fix that. So, I mean, there you know, from the seller side, there can be some some fear associated with um, discovering these issues that it needs to be disclosed. Um, but you know, on the flip side, uh, you know, again most of the buyers I think would probably have an inspection anyways mm -hmm. and you know most of the stuff is going to be discovered um, and discovering it up front where you know the seller can sort of preemptively decide um, you know maybe they're willing to do these certain things and maybe certain things on that report are, are stuff they just, maybe they don't have time to deal with. Maybe they don't have money to deal with. In which case, maybe they they work with their realtor to, um, you know, sell it with, and say, we're going to do this and not do this. And that's okay. In many cases, that works out just fine. Mm -hmm. uh, but they are able to really, um, you know, kind of decide up front what they want to do, what they don't want to do rather than being up against, they're already under contract, and then they're being faced with a sort of a more direct negotiation with between buyer and seller. You know, there's tendency, and we hear this, we hear this a lot, you know, certain uh, certain age ranges of, of buyers, you know, they go through, they say, oh, we want, we want everything fixed. Mm. Oh yeah. <laughs> Every item. It's like, well, okay, they, you know, it's One not a- 32, all of them. Not a new house. Your house is 40 years old, but uh, maybe that's not practical. Um, and then, you know, then perhaps they would be uh, disappointed. And as part of that negotiation process, learning through that negotiation process that they cannot, in fact, have everything corrected on the entire list. Maybe that's not feasible. Maybe there's a price negotiation. A bunch of different ways to deal with it, but. Yeah, it's it's hard to be reactive to that information, mm -hmm. but it's much easier to be proactive with that information because with yes. with that information you can you can tailor what your what your experience is going to be like as you're selling it. Yeah. Um, but if you don't know, you have no evidence to support what you do know, then you're just going to have to wait and be reactive. Mm -hmm. And you know, for a lot of our folks. Uh, you know, that are, you know, PCSing and are being told, you know, hey, next month, you're, you're heading down to lower 48 somewhere. You know, that's going to be real tough yeah. to find out next month or, you know, in 45 days, you know, that, uh, that you've got some major repairs that you're going to need to come up with some money to fix. Right. Um, but, you know, if we can use the 45 days that we've got from today, you know, to the time that you've got to be gone, mm -hmm. it's much easier and much less stress to be able to, to use that time to your advantage. One of the, one of the things that we also see from, you know, it seems like it happens a few times a year mm -hmm. is that we'll have some homeowners that are like, Hey, you know, I, I think I want to sell my home, but I've got this kind of really weird issue that's happening and I'm not really sure what's, what's going on. And either, you know, sometimes you'll go out and look at it. I know I've, I've gone out and looked at, at a bunch of homes, mm -hmm. had a bunch of questions and said, I need somebody that's smarter than me. And I've called Tim and Tim's come out and looked at, at things with me. And we've tried to, you know, get a handle on a situation because we're not sure what's going on. And we've used the, the pre-listing home inspection or just the home inspection in general as a basically like a, a much more in-depth disclosure about what's yeah. going on with this property. Um, There's many scenarios um, where there are, there are known issues with the house. You know, maybe people, I was dealing with one last week, they, uh, they inherited the house. Um, you know, maybe grandpa built it, uh, lived there a long time, good house, they enjoyed it, um, but things are maybe uh, non-conforming. 
So there's there's some issues that they know about. Um, in which case, you know, they're 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 trying to sell this thing and sell it relatively quickly. And the pre-sale inspection really does serve as kind of a disclosure. Um, it's sort of the ultimate disclosure because there's this effort being placed by the seller to let's let's find let's, let's find as much as as we can and and put it all out in the open. And then maybe they'll you know they'll be working with their realtor to um, to sell it with just those those items disclosed and they're they're doing price reduction mm-hmm. and they can still sell the house in many cases they still do um, it just depends on the situation but they've got control at that point to be able to decide maybe maybe we do you know we price this thing appropriately for the issues full disclosure we're going to put everything out there. If the buyers want to get a second opinion, they're certainly welcome to do that. They still have the discovery period. Mm-hmm. Um, in many cases, they'll, they'll call me with questions. I'm happy to talk with them or I'll schedule a, to meet them on site and go through it with them, make sure that they understand, you know, what's going on with those issues. And we you know, we try to be focused on solutions. So we talk about different options for fixing it, but maybe, maybe the seller, they don't have money to fix it. Or maybe in the case, uh, like last week, they, they inherited the house and they, they don't even live here. Mm-hmm. They, said, we, they said, we don't want to deal with that. Fairbanks, Alaska is a long ways away. Let's just, let's just find everything we can, do a report, price it appropriately, and sell it. And that, that is, uh, you know, that's an option that, that comes up. Yeah, and what, what we've found in, in taking that route is that by showing a, a you know prospective buyer, hey, these are all of the issues that you know the best home inspector is going to find, and not only are these all of the issues, but here are also the recommendations to get it, getting them fixed. Mm-hmm. What a buyer can do is take that report to any general contractor and say, can you price out this whole report? And you know, with that, they've got a punch list of, of everything that's going to be found, and they can get a, a very detailed, you know, invoice essentially, um, or an estimate rather, of, of what it's gonna cost to make all of those repairs. And some of those, you know, a lot of them end up being like some superficial things sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, but the big ticket ones, the ones that are like, well, if this doesn't happen, the roof's gonna cave in, uh, or the foundation's gonna fall apart. You know, those kind of things, those big ticket items, yeah. We, then we've already got a situation where we've got a, a contractor or a buyer that has the inspection report and a contractor that has already given them estimates on, on how to fix or, and what it's going to cost to fix everything. Yeah. So, you know, having that extra information is worth its weight in gold. Thanks again for talking with us a little bit more about uh, pre-listing home inspections. Um, hope you got some value out of this video. If you did, make sure you give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel if you're interested in some more Fairbanks related real estate content. If you have any questions, you can also drop them down in the, the comment section below. You can reach out to us at our website, www.fbxhomesearch.com, or you can give us a call 907-885-0316. Thank you so much and have a great day.